live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering ServiceNow Knowledge 2018. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back everyone to theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18. We're coming at you from Las Vegas. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Dave Vellante. We are theCUBE, we are the leader in live tech coverage. We're joined by Sebastian Loraisha. He is the Global Senior Director IT, Cybersecurity, Digital Transformations at NXP. Thanks so much for coming on theCUBE, Sebastian. Thank you for having me here. Good to see yeah. you. Good, thank you. So I want to start out by asking you a little bit about NXP, what, what you do and then what what your company does and then also what you do there. Uh, NXP is the leading semiconductors in uh, providing products for automotive and our company vision is uh, providing a zero connections and infrastructure for a smarter world. And that's what we are trying to achieve by implementing new ways of working with uh, making the world more autonomous, like autonomous driving, et cetera. So that's really what we're what we trying cool to do. Cool company. We are, yeah, really building, cool. Yeah, we are really building the future of tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. Big, large company too, right? I mean, yeah, about roughly 40. about uh, 33,000 employees currently. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. So, so you said you said you're really building the future of tomorrow. Unpack yes. that a little bit. Tell our viewers exactly what you're doing there. So today, what you have experienced also on this event is, of course, a lot about artificial intelligence and uh, uh, machine learning. NXP is being elected as the number three in the world as the provider of solutions for artificial intelligence. Yeah. So, if you really think what we are developing today, uh, it's already started and will become available in five or three years from now. So, it's it's you only can imagine what the future brings us and what we will shape. Yeah. When do you think owning your own car and driving your own car will become an exception? <laughs> driving your own car, you won't own a car anymore. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it will be some kind of hub that comes to your home uh, on demand when you need it. And maybe it even predicts when you would like to travel, huh? and then it comes by automatically. Yeah. Uh, how far away is that? You think it's two decades? Uh, no, I think here it's not about technology. I think we have the technology uh, 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 to even enable it today. Policy, but I think it's policies, yeah. regulations, compliance that doesn't allow to, let's go, harvest all data to make the right decisions there. Yeah? We had the insurance company on the other day and they were like, no, we're going to figure this out, this stuff out. Because we, out of we, necessity. We always figure this stuff out. Yeah, right? so yeah it's, it's really not about the technology anymore, it's really about legal, what prevents us access the data to make the right decisions, right? Yeah. It's amazing to just watch the progression of uh, automotive. I mean, they're basically software defined vehicles now with. Yeah. I mean, how, how many semiconductors are in a car now? Yeah, but also you can clearly see within NXP that we are transforming our business to more software because developing a product as hardware that needs to sustain for 15 years or longer, yeah. if you look to a car, right. yeah, then you would like to have the ability to be dynamic more on top of the product by using software. So also our products are becoming software defined. So you're very R&D centric culture. Yes. Uh, maybe talk about that, that ethos uh, and the cultural aspects and maybe what the process looks like, share with our viewers. Uh, it's, 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 I think it's the most uh, awesome part of the company. Of course, we also manufacture our products, uh, but mainly R&D is so dynamic. We have so uh, um, tech-savvy people, and, 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 and we have so much issues as, as IT, and you think, why are they consuming so much bandwidth from Netflix and doing? And, 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 and then they tell me, hey, we are developing a product for 4K, 4K entertainment into the car. So I have an issue on my wide area network, you're providing all kinds of services, but you're building for entertainment into the car for the future. Yeah. That so car better be autonomous. Yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Huh? Let's put the kids in the back seat, I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> you once described uh, ServiceNow as the platform of platforms. Yes. Can you talk a little bit about that from your R&D process? So what you clearly see, and also you would like, uh, I think all companies will eventually become an IT company. Eh? Also the banking companies tell us now today they are an IT company with a banking license. What I truly believe in is that we need to close the gap between IT and the business. Eh? So I think the future model is that IT will dissolve for a certain part into the business. But you don't want to have, of course you still have your shared services, you still have a hybrid model where you have eh, the countries where you're providing support from. Eh? So they are not always as close to the business. Eh? You have a 24-7 economy and you need to provide those services. And what you don't want to build is human interfaces. So what you try to achieve by building the platform of platforms, the fabric, is that you try to connect the business acumen, the business dynamics, their project management tools, their requirements management, into the IT systems, as such you can detect uh, the phase where they are in. If they are facing issues with their products, or uh, the projects are slipping and are delaying, you would like to increase automatically the severity of the incidents, so that they can automatically solve and you have a better understanding of the business priorities. NXP, 
it's really interesting because you're at the intersection of a lot of big trends. I mean, you're a hardware IoT. Manu yeah. Hardware manufacturer, you're a software developer, security, yep. AI, IoT, and, and underlying all this is data. Yeah, the new, the new money. <laughs> yeah, right. So, I'm, I'm just envisioning this pretty complicated matrix. Uh, I wonder if you could describe that in, in your terms. So, what, if you look from the IT infrastructure perspective, the growth on data is enormous. To cope with that growth, because the data allows us to make better products. You can, data could be a requirement, but could be also the effect of the results. What we try to prevent, the products that we bring into the, uh, the real life, that are, you fill your, uh, your requir requirements of quality is increasing. We had consumer grade, automotive grade, and we had for the, uh, um, uh, the flying industry, we also the same, the same grade. But however, your, your norm is increasing. So what you clearly see by increasing the norm, we call that the total quality culture, you also would like to have a total quality product. You don't want to replace your phone one year from now. And I think if you look four years back, a phone, one and a half years, two years, and then you had a new one. But those products become more expensive. They become more part of your daily life. Uh, it's part of your personal brand even. And that generates that data. We need to, if you try to work on proper quality, that will generate enormous amount of data. But the data can use to optimize your processes up front uh, in, in, in the future, as such it becomes more cost efficient to develop new products. So it's really about the continuous need for more data, it's also continuously need to optimize your processes. Yeah. Where does ServiceNow fit into all this? How do you use ServiceNow? And so for me, what you really see in, in, in ServiceNow today is the best workflow engine we can imagine. It really orchestrates all IT and connecting business processes. And um, I think the potential, and I think also if you're looking to the, the portfolio of where they have HR, it's going beyond IT. And now they often, what already said by John Donohoe, they come in via the IT angle by ITSM. But, but as the process become more and more part of your culture rather than a habit, than a an, an forced way of working, then the platform starts supporting the culture of your uh, organization because by machine learning, a proper UI, visualization capabilities, it becomes really part about metering, showing what you're doing, and really helps you to orchestrate your daily work. And that's also, I think, of the new company, uh, it's a little bit too difficult to pronounce uh, it here, but it's about orchestrating the future way of working. Yeah. So we were just we're hearing so much about this making the world of work work better for people. You describe yeah, it as a workflow engine, really helping employees organize their work days, orchestrate their work days, yeah. improve them. Can you describe the culture at NXP and, and sort of how ServiceNow is, is improving employees' everyday lives? What we really try to do, and it's also what we see, it's easy to show the cost efficiency savings you have from a platform as ServiceNow. Um, uh, if you uh, improve your onboarding by optimizing the process by three days, uh, because that's your first point of engagement when you bring some people on board, and if it goes fluently, work the integration with ServiceNow, providing the services, everything is ready at day one. Yeah? Day one, you're there, your, your, your laptop is ready, your provisioned, your desk is ready, and you have orchestrated processes, that's a flawless end user experience. And that's what we would like to provide with ServiceNow, orchestrate with ServiceNow, because that's what we, the user sees. If he's in need of uh, any of the help of services, he, we would like them to go shift left to ServiceNow, and uh, with help of knowledge, help themselves. We are all Dr. Google, and we would like to have access to that information ourselves and not being dependent by the expert. We all become that expert. Are employees happier? I mean, I think that's a question too because we, we know that from research that happier employees make more, more productive, productive workplaces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're more likely to stay, recommend it to their friends, and the network gets bigger. I mean, what, what's If you have a company that shapes the future, we have very happy employees. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Self-fulfilling prophecy there. Yes. When did you go live? With so uh, we are one of the first adopters in 2007 in Europe. So we really started then. I don't know the name because they talk about days, months, and now they talk about <laughs> locations. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, I think we did a big overhaul uh, during some of our big integrations that we have done. Uh, so we are really one of the first customers in Europe providing uh, the product. And how far, where, what version are you in? Uh, we are in Jakarta, ready to upgrade. We will skip one release if we go to... Uh, to London. Yeah, yeah, run London. Oh, yeah. okay. And, 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 and you started with ITSM like, like most? ITSM, 
ITOM, so IT Operation Management, and now we have the IT Business Management app like Demand Management, IT Financial Management, and really orchestrating from demand to fulfilling. We've, a lot of our guys have written that they feel like machine intelligence and ITOM go together very well. Yes. Do you agree with that? And yes, How do you see sure. that affecting your business? So what we clearly see is that uh, the mean time to detect, the mean time to repair, you would like to uh, detect outages before they hit the end user. See it? So you really would like to make sure that before they notice, it's already being solved. Or when it goes wrong, that you already say, we are on top of it, we know. We know the impact, we know that the whole chain of events, a single network port or power outage somewhere in a room could cause a big effect on the whole IT service. And therefore really, ServiceNow helps us to make sure that we are on top of the things. Sebastian, you mentioned off camera that you are very intimately involved with ServiceNow and helping them with their roadmap, providing feedback. So yeah. can you share with us some of the things that, that you talk about with them and what would you like to see? Where's their white space? What's on their to-do list from your perspective? So, what, what, but of course, if, if you look to our portfolio, what we are doing as NXP, so I'm a member of the Product Advisory Council for IT Operation Management, and I'm closely working also on the Lighthouse program with, uh, with ServiceNow and all kind of new releases. Um, what I really think, if you see what they are investing to, of course, they're now coming forward with a chat box, awesome. But if I see how my children consume information using YouTube, eh, and I think also John touched upon it, but really what we are building as NXP is in the flawless end user experience and everything is being you don't have a UI. Uh, if you look to your car, today you have an, uh, a speedometer, uh, an RPM meter. Why do you have RPM on your desk? Why? What's the value of you knowing? In the past, you <laughs> needed it to shift gears. Right. And why is it still there? Does it really add value? Because yeah. it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you love dials. So it's yeah, about, it's about <laughs> the end user experience. It's about, about your lifestyle. It's about your brand identity. It's not as more about requirements. So, um, <laughs> It, it's right. so, of course, Great UI point. is important, I believe it. What's more important, I think, to invest in that engine behind it, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and how to ingest data. So because what is really required to make smart decisions is a lot of data. And still, I think the platform has potential, but there's some room for improvement to get uh, proper integration by uh, onboarding more data, making the right decisions, and uh, orchestrate the actions out of it. Huh? And I think the learn, think, act, we have the same st strategy as sense, think, act, and NXP. I think that's how robotics and AI will work in the future. Yeah. I mean, data is the fuel for your innovation. Yes, I yes, mean, so, yes. I mean, that's a great point you're making. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the feelings in Europe, you're based in the Netherlands, yes. about mm -hmm. automation and the future of jobs. Because in the, in the United States, there is a, a significant anxiety about the machines coming for our jobs, and at least the media portray it that way. And I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm curious from your perspective, how, what is the feeling in Europe? Uh, of course, I think I see, I see this as an opportunity, but automation will change, of course, and, uh, automation, machine learning, it will ex extensively ch change the whole way of working. Uh, because what we say, say it's about helping the business by decision automation, making decisions, yes, so we try to reduce the human effort, we have a total quality culture, but we still need more and more people to help them to ask the right questions because the innovation, of course, comes from a lot of data, but still have people who connect the dots of never existing connections before. If you have a lot of data and you, know, you don't know which question to ask, would you build a new solution? So it's still about smart people and creativity, and of course we know patterns, we know what people are doing, but still the real breakthroughs is being done by people, and therefore we need those people still in the, in the future. So the anxiety is there, yes, automation will there, but I think it's about building a joint incentive between your outsource providers, between your service providers, between your workforce, is what's the incentive for them on automation? Because otherwise you get a culture of fear and anxiety and, and, and a lot of doubt, and that will be counterproductive for your, for your company uh, uh, value, yeah. Who do you think as a journalist? I mean, you're right, the mainstream media talks about this a lot, and the, it's, they're actually accurate. The data is there to suggest that machines are replacing human and cognitive functions, and that's a concern. But there's not a lot written in, in the media about the, the uh, opportunity, there is some about the opportunity, but more importantly, what to do about it. In other words, public policy, education, I mean, uh, maybe I'm just missing no, it. No, I agree with you, I completely agree. And also this idea that Sebastian is bringing up is showing, proving that, it, that this can work for you. I mean, this is actually going to improve your work life by taking care of a lot of the, the drudge work, or show opportunities for humans and robots to work alongside of each yes. other and, and so there you go. Well, in tech, you better be an optimist, you know? Although, <laughs> it's true. it seems like Musk and Stephen Hawking really weren't optimists, but maybe they're thinking, you know, 
hundreds of years. Light years yeah. ahead. Uh, right, 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 yeah. right. You report directly to the CIO. Yes. At this conference we're hearing so much about the, the changing role of the CIO and how uh, the CIO has to be thinking so much more broadly about the business than ever before. I mean, what, how, do you, how do you see it? So that's an interesting question because that's exactly where we are in today. So we have the, had the classic way, the CIO, financial, risk control, et cetera. Then we have the transformational CIO, then we have the CDO, <laughs> or we have the future COO who takes care of operations. Because today IT is often been seen in the enterprise companies as a shared service center, something you do with the lights off. Uh, but clearly, uh, bank, uh, bank accounts, uh, what I'd already told you uh, before, was uh, we are now IT companies with a banking license. As IT becomes more dominant, it becomes part of operations. And yes, we need a transformational, transformational CIO, CDO, or a new type of COO that sees IT as part of their operations and their way of working. And of course you can give the new title, but at the end it's just a smart guy who helps the company succeed and brings IT as one together to make success. Not, it's not about a role or responsibility. I think there's still the name of a chief information, chief data officer, is still the right title because he makes sure he gets the right data towards the business to make the right decisions faster. Right, great. It's not about running only the, the lights on. Huh? When the uh, lights doesn't go on, it's IT's fault, right? <laughs> always, yeah, yeah, yeah. always, always. Yeah, that, <laughs> that need doesn't go away, yeah. but it's, it's, yeah. it's table stakes now. Yeah, right. Exactly. Sebastian, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you. I'm Thank Rebecca you. Knight for Dave Vellante. We will have more from theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18 coming up just after this.